Okay. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Love Your Liver live stream. It is March 10th, 2023. This is number 84 in a row without missing a beat, without missing a week. I'm um, glad to have you all here. We have a little housekeeping to cover real quick for those of you who don't know yet. Um, Keystone Minerals, one of our flagship products, a, a combination of uh, zinc and molybdenum and selenium is now back in stock. Finally, for that one, lactoferrin is on its way. Don't email Julie. But anyway, I wanted to let you guys know Keystone Minerals is on its way. I mean, it's here. Keystone Minerals is back. We got it. And lactoferrin should be soon. Supply chain issues. Oh. Anyway, so we made some improvements to Keystone Minerals. It's now a smaller capsule, so it's easier to swallow. Same exact same ingredients. I went to a different um, contract manufacturer and they were able to put it into a smaller capsule with no fillers and no additives and none of the other garbage. And then also it's in a smaller bottle now, so there's less waste. Because, you know, climate change and all that stuff. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anyway, smaller bottle, less waste. That's good. Who wouldn't like that, right? So anyway, I'm Dr. Garrett Smith, known as the nutrition detective around these here YouTube parts. And today we got a couple fun things to go over. I see that the uh, chat is like already going bonkers this morning. That's awesome. For those of you who are here, who are here now, please, you know, post in the chat. I'm going to try to get to questions at the end. And uh, there's also the super chats. If you want your um, question to go to the top of the list, there's one right now. Thank you. We'll get to that. And then um, there is... Uh, Make sure to X out of the chat if you're here now live and go and like this video. And also, obviously, if you're in the chat, you're a subscriber. But if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that. And if you come here later, please leave a comment and like and subscribe and all that stuff because that helps all the uh, computers to know that people like watching this and that they'll want to watch it too. So, okay, got a couple cool things for the live stream this morning. One, I wanted to go over, so I don't know if you know this, but the government, the U.S. government decided that that companies don't have, they used to have to label vitamin A content on foods. They have removed that, that requirement in the last, I don't know how many years it is, three years, maybe five years. They removed that. Actually, I think it was during the time that Grant Jenneru came out and I came out and we were starting to post a lot on vitamin A toxicity. And then all of a sudden, the requirement to label vitamin A on foods disappeared. Now, why would that be? Well, one of the things our government says, I, if the stream is stopping or lagging, I, I can't help that, Pierre. I, I wish I could. Um, but why would they stop labeling vitamin A on foods? Well, potentially, if there was going to be any um, lawsuits, because let's say people started to figure out that they were being poisoned because of bad science or corrupt science or whatever, well, they might want to stop taking it off so people weren't, if, as people start learning and they go, hey, wait, over the RDA can cause vitamin A toxicity. And they start looking at foods and they go, ooh, this is 20%. Ooh, this is 40%. Why are they adding vitamin A to my food? Why are they doing this? So <laughs> they stopped requiring it. Weird. Our government says that vitamin A deficiency, one of the reasons they say they stopped doing it was because vitamin A deficiency in the US is extremely rare. So if we know vitamin A is toxic and vitamin A deficiency is very rare, do you see what that's leaving us with? Vitamin A deficiency in, in westernized countries where people get enough meat is extremely rare. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with toxicity. That's it. But what are people trying to do? Well, let's go into this link that I, I forget who posted on the network. Um, I would give them props right now. I just forgot who posted this. Somebody posted this on the network about orange corn. 
orange corn. The title here is More Nutritious, Better Tasting Orange Corn Launches in U.S. Market. Naturally bred corn has abundance of antioxidant carotenoids with, quote, nuttery, nutty, buttery flavor. Okay. Orange corn, a more nutritious naturally selected variety of corn, is now available in the U.S. markets through Purdue-affiliated startup Nutramaze LLC. So what they did, let me let me read it where it was. Um, where did they first market it? They marketed it in Africa. Why? Why do they say vitamin A deficiency happens in Africa so much and all these other kind of, well, very poor areas of the world, the areas of the world where they tend to find vitamin A deficiencies most, deficiency, as if that's a real thing, is in places where they don't eat much meat. Because, I'll, I'll, I, I'll, somebody find my Twitter thread on, here I'll find it. Oh, come on. There it is. My vitamin A deficiency doesn't exist thread. Let me post this in the chat. When there's not enough meat, which contains enough protein and zinc and potentially taurine, we see vitamin A deficiency. And then when people get, as I go over the research in that thread, when people get enough protein, their vitamin A levels in the blood go up. They weren't eating vitamin A. When they get enough zinc, their vitamin A levels in the blood go up. Well, zinc isn't vitamin A, so where'd the vitamin A come from? And taurine also does this. The vitamin A was stored in their liver, and they were toxic, and they start getting stuff to get it out to make like retinol binding protein, which protects you from vitamin A. Retinol binding protein, antibody type protein, protects you from vitamin A. And when you don't have enough protein, and when you don't have enough zinc, you don't make retinol binding protein and all that vitamin A just accumulates in the liver and it stays there. This is why they find so-called vitamin A deficiency in all these poor countries, rural areas, especially where they don't eat very much meat. And do you know there's studies showing that meat has fixed rickets and meat has fixed other vitamins. So, 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 so vitamin A, vitamin D deficiency problems have like rickets have been fixed by enough meat in the diet. I'll have to find that research. Somebody, somebody posted it. And then, uh, vitamin A deficiency symptoms have also been fixed by enough meat. Vitamin A deficiency doesn't exist. It's a meat deficiency. So anyway, they were making the corn and where did they want to sell it first? Where do they want to send it first? The orange corn. They want to send it to Africa. Okay. Makes sense. It's where Bill Gates loves to give people vitamin A. Also, if there were areas of the world where they would want people to be, I mean, they want everybody to be less fertile everywhere. They want infertility everywhere. But in the places where populations are exploding, where would they want to take vitamin A first to reduce the fertility rate? Oh, I don't know. The places that produce the most kids? Just a correlation. But anyway, so orange corn. Here we go. Where was it? Let me find the quote in here. Used a process known as biofortification to naturally increase the amount of antioxidant carotenoids in corn, making the corn more nutritious and creating a deep orange color. The human body converts certain pro-vitamin A carotenoids such as beta-carotene into vitamin A, an essential vitamin, no, that promotes eye health and supports the immune system. Since they're going to mention eye health with beta-carotene, let me go find my carrots or BS thread. Um, where it was actually shown that women who, where I put the, the research showing that where women ate more carrots, as women ate more carrots, their night vision got worse. I also go over the propaganda for the World War II propaganda thing about carrots supposedly helping night vision when they actually make it worse. Gosh, do you think propaganda lies? Weird. People still believe it. 
And I just posted on Twitter this morning about how Ashton Kutcher was hospitalized with pancreatitis. We went over the pancreas on one of the live streams, I believe, if I didn't go over in my inner circle on the network. But but <laughs> Ashton Kutcher was hospitalized with pancreatitis from doing too much carrot juice. And then I linked my carrots or BS thread there. Carrots are not good for you. Orange foods are not good for you. Yellow, orange, red in the plant world and dark green. Don't eat them. They're the most poisonous. So anyway, orange corn. So what it, what it, Bill Gates has, the Gates Foundation has funded the development of yellow rice, golden rice, a genetically modified rice to give us more beta carotene. Uh, the Gates Foundation has also funded um, the development of carotenoid producing non-sweet bananas. They're trying to make even like high vitamin A foods, make even more vitamin A. They're, they were working on um, plantains, GMOing them or, or biofortifying them to make more vitamin A. And then they were also working on, I think they were working on even like yams to get yams to make even more vitamin A. So, oh, and there's an interesting thing in, uh, about that I just found in my birth control. I'm, I'm redoing my birth control. So some of you may have seen my birth control pills and how they ruin human health here on this, this channel. They do it by increasing the toxic bile in your blood. And if you don't understand toxic bile theory yet, go back to my live stream 71 and watch it. But so they increase the amount of toxic leaky bile into your blood that contains vitamin A and copper that were stored in the liver. It's put into the bile. The bile is, you know, tr the liver's trying to get rid of it through the intestines, but it leaks back into the blood and then you get increased vitamin A and copper in the blood. But the thing I wanted to say is a lot of the pro vitamin A people out there, they'll say, well, some people can't convert carotenoids well enough into retinol. And so they're, they're actually vitamin A deficient. And I go, hmm. No, you want to know what I found? I, when I was looking back over these papers on birth control, I actually found they were saying in these papers that beta carotene in the blood was actually going down and retinol in the blood was going up compared to people who were not on birth control. But wait, we know that birth control ruins health. We know it absolutely destroys health. If ladies, if you're on birth control, you are, and you're wondering why you're sick. And for most of you, uh, most women gain tons of weight either while they're on birth control or as soon as they stop. Why is this? Because you've got more vitamin A and copper in your blood. I've got a thread on Twitter about obesity and that, and, and the study, the research on serum copper and obesity is nuts. Like copper up goes up in your blood. You, you gain weight. But anyway, so, so if birth control pills are increasing the rate of conversion of carotenoids into retinol, the thing that all the vitamin A people think is great, why aren't birth control pills making people healthier? Why are they making people so much sicker? Because it's a poison. Your body doesn't want to convert carotenoids into retinol until it, it feels able to. Birth control pills force this and they ruin health. What a coinky dink. Isn't that weird? So anyway, orange corn. Don't eat it. Done. I did put that link in there, right? Let me see. There it is. Yes. So anyway, okay. So I, and I wanted to go over Will, who is always here on the live stream, um, made a really interesting observation about yellow teeth and health, like, why do we like, as humans, why do we like white teeth? Why are white teeth, like, like when you look at somebody with white teeth, we could, it, it's not everything, right? I've actually <laughs> been telling some people lately that, that one of the first things that I look at when I'm looking at members of the opposite sex in terms of attractiveness is I actually look at teeth first. And I'm just being totally honest because like, it's, it's more of like, what would make me not be interested in somebody? What's the very first thing in a woman that would make me not be interested in her? Well, bad teeth, like really bad teeth would just kill it. It's just done. I, I mean, I am the son of a dentist. <laughs> so teeth are kind of a thing. Um, and 
teeth are kind of representative of, you could think of it as how people's skeleton developed. You know, they're kind of outgrowth. They're basically an outgrowth of your skeleton. And so really poorly aligned teeth or really dirty, nasty teeth or yellow teeth would indicate some state of poor bone development. So why do, so when, when we're talking about yellow teeth, why are yellow teeth so off-putting? Because they reflect the liver's health. Let me explain how. We do put vitamin A into the saliva. If it's in the blood, if something's in the blood, it comes out in your saliva. Let me find my old post on this. On my old research forum, I'll put the link. Vitamin A can come out in basically all of your body fluids. Body's not putting it there because it wants to. Your body's putting it there because it's trying desperately to get rid of it. Okay, so here's that link. Title of that little post, vitamin A is excreted slash detox through the feces, which is your poop, urine, sweat, saliva, tears, and even the breath. Okay, how desperate is your body to get rid of this stuff? So desperate. So think about it. And I also go over, I think I, I have another article where I go over how it's known that beta carotene stains teeth yellow. So think of it this way. People will say, but if you eat it, it goes right by your teeth. It's not really going to stick around and cause them to be yellow. That's true. So what if you're putting vitamin A back out into your saliva so your teeth are marinating in it all day long? And vitamin A is known to basically eat away at your bone. Oh, so vitamin A in your saliva could make your teeth yellow and eat away at your teeth because vitamin A just pulls calcium right out of bones. So we got that. So then we have that vitamin A. And, and, and when you look at somebody like the jaundiced look, right, whether it's in their eyes or whether it's in their skin, like vitamin A, they look sick. We even call cowards as, as, uh, was it uh, Axis of Logos posted? Um, I think it was, or it was Mythos Mapped or Axis of Logos. I forget which one of you guys. You're both helping awesomely on Twitter with this stuff. But they were saying we call cowards yellow, right? Yellow, yellow belly. And because, and, he, and the other comment he made was because they have no gall. They don't have the gall, which is related to bile, right? We've known about bile and its connection to health for a very long time. But so if people are yellow, they don't look healthy. Where would the yellowness come from? Well, bile is yellow. Vitamin A is yellow. So you could have your teeth marinating in yellow, yellow vitamin A. Or if your liver is really sick and you start getting GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or heartburn, or acid reflux, as a lot of people know it, they call it acid reflux, but it's really bile reflux. It is bile coming up into your stomach. This is the this is one of the ways that cholestasis happens or toxic leaky bile going into the wrong places. Bile going up into your stomach and up into your throat and up into your mouth is yellow. What color could it stain your teeth? Yellow. What does bile contain? Vitamin A. So it marinates your teeth and you get yellow teeth. Now I had, I, I will be honest during the process of my, I'm, I've been on this journey four and a half years now. And there was a time where I was pushing detox too hard. Listen, folks, remember, this is not a game where I was pushing detox too hard to way too much soluble fiber, way too much like 60 grams a day of soluble fiber. I was, I was pushing way too hard and I did, my teeth did get yellower because I was pushing too much bile out of my liver into my blood. And if you don't understand this, you should go watch the love your liver live stream 71. And now my teeth have gone back to the way they were before. So my teeth have naturally kind of 
clean that out because you, you turn over cells, even in your teeth. And if you don't have the vitamin A going into those cells, they get, they stay white. If you got vitamin A and bile going into those cells as they make it, they get yellow. Now, the other funny thing that I was thinking is coffee is associated with staining teeth. But is it, let's, let's think about this. What is coffee also known for doing? It's known for increasing your bile dumping, right? So is it necessarily the coffee, which of course it could stain your teeth, but is it also related to the bile that it's dumping, possibly going the wrong way? So think of how could bile get to your mouth? It could be GERD or acid reflux, and you don't have to feel GERD or acid reflux for it to be happening. Remember, it's bile reflux. You don't have to feel it. Lots of people have a little cough that <laughs> they just have a little cough that is reflux coming up and kind of tickling the back of their throat and causing them a cough. But also the bile and the vitamin A could get into your mouth via your saliva. Okay, there is, there is bile in your saliva. This will take one second. Bile, saliva, PubMed. Analysis of major bile acids in saliva samples of patients. How would bile get into your saliva via either coming up your esophagus or getting there via your blood? Should bile be in your blood? No, bile should not be in your blood at all if you're not leaking it. Okay. So that's the, so, so we have this, so just think about it instinctually. We have an aversion to yellow teeth. People are obsessed with whitening their teeth. Now, remember, if you go and you whiten your teeth using like chemical compounds, stuff like that, those are probably mostly toxic, if not all toxic. But what are they doing? They're oxidizing. How can people use hydrogen peroxide to whiten their teeth? Because hydrogen peroxide oxidizes stuff. You can use charcoal to whiten your teeth. What does charcoal do? it binds to bile and vitamin A. Do you see a pattern here? How do we break down vitamin A? We oxidize it. How do we bind vitamin A and bile? We use, we can, we can use charcoal, but be very careful. If you could, you could swish with charcoal if you can't take charcoal orally because it constipates too much for you at this point. First of all, you should join the Love Your Liver program so we can get you pooping normally and help you that way. And then we should you could use it as a swish. You could put some charcoal in water and just, you know, stir it up, take a swig of it. And now you don't drink it. I mean, take, put it in your mouth. Like you're going to do a mouthwash, swish it for as long as you want, spit it out. You could use that cup through the day. You could do multiple swishes a day to try to get it off the goal, right? That would be the short term fix to try to get the teeth whiter during, let's say the detox process. The long term fix would be get the toxicity out of you, get the bile out of your blood and get your vitamin A down and not drink things or eat things that are like bitter, which also bitter things tend to be yellow. Weird coincidence, right? So there's that. But that 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 post by Will about, uh, let me just read his post. Our natural repulsion to yellow teeth is rooted in hepatic, which means liver health. One glance and you know what state their liver is in. I also think it's interesting how John disappears on the face. I see a lot of yellow teeth out in public, usually from skinny people. Skinny people have a real tough time getting rid of toxins out of their liver. I have this, I have I, under types, over types. I talk about this in the, in the love your liver program, which if you want to get it, it's members.nutritiondetective.com. It's down in the, in the info box. But, uh, jaundice, ugh. yellow, yellowing of the eyes. It's said in Chinese medicine, that the liver opens up into the eyes and then the yellow skin. And then, so we, we have these instinctual ways of judging people's health. If you wanted to look at your internal health, one of the ways you could look would be the teeth, right? The teeth would show your development health, right? Because that all happens while we're kids. And then it would also show your liver's health in terms of how much bile and vitamin A are circulating around in your mouth on a regular basis. Okay. So. I will get, don't worry, I will get to the super chats, y'all. I got one more thing. I want to go through this testimonial. Okay, now I'm not going to say this person's name. I, I, they posted it in the network and they said I could use it. 
So here we go. This person, we, we read a testimonial from this person um, on a previous live stream. I did not look which one it was, but some of you will recognize it. Here we go. Hey, everyone, 85 days in. So there's 85 days on the vitamin A, on the, on the Love Your Liver program and low vitamin A and all the stuff we talk about in the program. Hey, everyone, 85 days in, and I wanted to follow up on this post. He posted the link, which people seem to like. I've been following Dr. Smith's work since August of 22, but didn't want to jump right in until I understood his concepts more. That's, that's a really smart idea. Let me just add that. In November of 22, I decided to go all in. 28 years old, 140 pounds, five foot eight. So here we're going to, we're going to talk. I mean, he's going to go into his timeline of, of health per, per um, pursuits and his food choices. So I, I want to go through this because I want people to see how this stuff happens, how you can just be like a normal person or a health nut and you can cause yourself all sorts of health problems. Many people get sick when they first try to get healthy, right? How many of you out there you were fine until you decided to get into like optimal health pursuits. And then you ruined your health. This happens to so many people. So let's, so obviously the health nuts, the health gurus don't know what they're talking about. You can go into whole foods and find just as many sick people or even more sick people than you can in the normal grocery store. So here we go. Timeline of health food choice, health slash food choices in my life. If you are interested. Okay, here we go. From age zero to 18 was very active with sports, but ate a combination of mostly home cooked meals and processed foods and drinks, Gatorade and soda, fast foods, etc. Got the standard jabs. Didn't consume alcohol up until this point, which was a plus at 14. My appendix burst and had to have an emergency surgery. Docs say it was random and don't know what caused it. And he put the rolling eyes emoji in an LOL. But I believe it was from poor diet and eating Wendy's and pizza somewhat regularly. And he put, not sure if this is backed up by the science, but it's one of those things you just feel strongly about. Let me just interject here. Yes, it's, I mean, okay, folks, appendixes don't just burst. This is ludicrous, right? That's why the, there's the LOL. Everything happens for a reason. Okay. And, it, and, and poor food choices and pokies, you know, pokies and uh, all this stuff contributes. Okay. So here we continuing ages 18 to 25 college years. And after two years spent drinking a lot and eating disgusting and processed dining hall food. I remember those days last two years, I was able to shop and cook for myself and started my quote health journey after college, continued to shop and cook for myself and be healthier some meat, but tons of plant foods, green drinks, spirulina pills, etc. If you didn't know, algae makes more carotenoids, vitamin A than just about anything on the planet, but was still drinking alcohol regularly. So we had alcohol regularly. We had lots of plant foods, right? The health nut plant foods. Here we go. 25 to ages, 25 to 28 went full vegan. Never go full vegan. No, I'm kidding. Um, I did the vegan thing well with no processed foods, but ended up eating tons of carrots, sweet potatoes, and tomatoes. Then came off at early 2022 due to feeling horrible and tried the stupid desperation stuff that makes things worse. Here's the list. Raw dairy, liver, eggs, cod liver oil, etc. We're in massive quantities, but regularly enough. Noticed I was getting even worse than when I was vegan. Stop drinking alcohol during this time. I want to interject here. Note that he never talks about vitamin A supplements other than cod liver oil, which is just think of cod liver oil as a uh, fatty liver extract, fish, fatty liver extract. That's what cod liver oil is. You're taking fat soluble oil. You're taking oil out of a liver where would the oil in the liver be? Oh gosh, fatty liver. You're eating the fatty liver extract. Okay, so don't do that ever. Watch the video on this channel about cod liver oil. Bad stuff. I also did a Twitter thread on it. You can find it in my pin thread. So he says now, so this is his diet now as he's doing the, the vitamin A, the low vitamin A approach and the love your liver approach. 
He says, now diet has included meat, beans, rice, quinoa, apples, bananas, oatmeal. Once a week, he has potatoes or lentils or avocados, or maybe that's all together. I don't know. Still not drinking alcohol. I've aggregated all my health issues prior to starting on this program that I was hoping to resolve below, as well as their current status. So he's going to, here we go with the list. Light sensitivity, outside and on the computer, gone. Blurry vision slash inflamed eyes, gone. Eye floaters, mostly gone. Still have them once in a while, but much more rare. Joint pain, joint and bone pain, particularly in legs. Listen, was really bad after having eggs. Is now gone. Still a bit tight here and there, but that's mostly because I haven't been working out due to feeling shitty all the time. Just this week, I was able to work out multiple times without symptoms, and I'm really excited about adding more weight over the coming weeks. So we're seeing lots of improvements in lots of his symptoms. We're going to get to more. There's more here, but he was saying he didn't feel good for a little while, may have been going through a little bit of a detox dump cycle, may have been pushing things a little too hard with the soluble fiber. Either way, I'm not going to analyze that right now because I, this is, I can't from this testimonial, but these things happen. This is why you constantly hear me on here saying, this is not a game. And most of the time I'm just slowing people down. But all of a sudden he got better. Okay. He was able to work out multiple times without causing problems. Exercise can be an agitator. Exercise is a stressor. Stressors tend to dump bile. If you push things too hard and you dump too much bile and you leak too much bile into your bloodstream, you're going to have a bad time. Okay, so if you if exercise is making you feel significantly worse afterwards, you need to do less of what you're doing for now. Or you could do something different. You can walk. I mean, seriously, I will tell you that if you just need to maintain your weight, if you're if you're trying either not to gain weight or you're feeling really bad and you know you used to train really hard and you can't right now because you're in this phase of the detox, it's a temporary phase, but Walking 10, if you can get to walking 10,000 steps a day, you can get a step counter if you need to, but 10,000 steps a day will work wonders in terms of maintaining weight, even helping you lose weight, just walking. Okay, here we go. Continuing brain inflammation, gone, lethargy, gone, able to work out and still stay up 16 to 18 hours a day. Forgetting things slash poor focus, gone. Feeling great working again and don't feel like I am jeopardizing my career every time I needed to go take a nap in the middle of the day. Low motivation to do anything, including house chores, gone. Motivation has returned. Gray spots on eyes, same, same, no difference. Bloodshot eyes, very slightly better. White spots on nails, same, still there. Most importantly, general well-being slash enjoyment of life has returned for the past one and a half to two years. I've been spending entire days thinking about health issues, how to fix them, trying new things, trying supplements, laying in bed with no energy, etc. I used to dread waking up in the morning and having to do anything. Now I feel productive, keep the house cleaner, play pickleball several times a week, and I'm just genuinely happy to be with family and friends. Remember it last was it last live stream where I went over vitamin A and copper and depression? And now in this testimonial, we have somebody who's just genuinely happy. Their general well-being and enjoyment of life has returned. Do you think there's a connection? Okay, so here we go. Changes made since his day 40 update. So this was only 45 days from his last update. Here we go. Oh, here we go. I think a lot of the symptoms that were reported from my last update that got better were due to pushing supplements too hard. Notice how I already mentioned that earlier. I dialed this back significantly by stopping altogether and instead took the approach of small daily doses starting with selenium. Had a major breakthrough this past week or so. I've not only noticed I'm significantly less tired, but also having much better mental clarity and focus. Body temperature seems to be a bit improved too. I used to feel cold all the time. Still getting some cold hands and feet, but it's more manageable and feel it will get better over time. We'll increase my dose of selenium this week, and then if all is well, move on to other minerals, starting with molybdenum. This is a perfect example. So I, I knew that things may have been pushed too hard. All I had to hear was earlier that there was stuff going on, and I went, it sounds like we're pushing too hard, and then later he says, I was pushing too hard. I hadn't even read this whole testimonial in detail. 
This is what we see all the time. And this, this person listened. That's the key thing. They listened to me in terms of what I generally say, and they listened to their body, which is the most important thing. That's how they could listen to what I say. They listened to their body, and then they listened to what I said to do about it. This is how this all works. If you want a protocol, go to the protocol people, ruin your health, and then come back and find me if you want a protocol. We don't do protocols. We do principles and concepts. Because everyone is different. Think of it as like cars on the road. There's tons of different cars on the road. I'm talking about gas cars right now. I'm not talking about the disasters that are Teslas um, and, and the, the evil electric cars. I can't the, just listen to the sound of an electric car, the drone. I swear it's evil. I can't stand the drone sound of these cars. It's the sound of drones, the sound of electric cars. I can't stand it. It just sounds evil to me. So if you have an electric car, hey, I mean, you can sit in that EMF box all you want. You have a car that's running on electricity and a, and a metal box. You put yourself inside a metal box that is like a giant electromagnetic field. I'm not doing it. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so this, this is very good. I love these testimonials where people show that they're getting better because they listened to the concepts and principles. This is brilliant. Continuing. Another setback was caused by eating tons of white rice for a few weeks span. Felt tingling in my legs and my feet. Stopped rice and supplemented B1 for a week or so, and it seemed to stabilize. Now, I know Grant Genru has been doing brown rice and white rice for going on, what is it, eight or nine years now? And other people have done rice. Rice has an arsenic problem. I don't care. It has an arsenic problem. Arsenic will deplete your zinc. Zinc is hugely important in this detox process. I think a lot of people who do kind of the Grant Genereau diet, I'm not saying it's a bad diet, it's a low vitamin A diet, but kind of that Grant Genereau diet, I think between the rice and, and just the, and, and there's just not, there's not enough, you, okay, so here, you need extra zinc for the entire detox. You need extra zinc generally. Not everybody, but most people. And then beans and grains in general could require you to have even more zinc. Okay. And then if you eat rice, then all of a sudden you've got arsenic coming and guaranteed. It's only a matter of how much arsenic is in the rice you're eating. Now, if, if rice is one of the only foods you can eat, you better watch the rice and arsenic video in my, in the, in the love your liver program. And you better take measures to reduce the arsenic in the rice. Okay. So, so we have arsenic in the rice requiring more zinc. We have beans and grains potentially making you need more zinc. And then we have only beef. I think with today's zinc, zinc deficiencies in the soil, which means that the cows are deficient in zinc in the meat. And then you have the increased needs of zinc as you're trying to detox copper and vitamin A. Do you see how this is not adding up in a good direction? I think lots of people who have issues when they do kind of the, the, the meat and beans and rice approach is when they, when they get into problems and they're going, wait, I was feeling so great at the beginning and now I don't feel so good is zinc deficiency. Okay, now some people don't tolerate zinc supplements very well. So then we have to work on other things. This is what I do with my clients in the office hours where people get ongoing support when they're working with me and we figured out, but zinc deficiency is a huge thing. Can you make yourself zinc deficient from the detox? Yes, absolutely. Is it the fault of the detox? No, it's that you have so much copper toxicity and so much vitamin A toxicity that it would be really hard to get enough of it from meat. Let me tell you the only people who come to me with good zinc levels in the beginning are all muscle meat carnivores. They're the only people who come to me with good zinc levels at the beginning, generally. The only thing I don't like about the all, I mean, the main thing I don't like about the all muscle meat carnivore, when you, when you hear about people doing all muscle meat carnivore and they say, I'm having amazing results. I want you to think about that diet. It's a low vitamin A, extremely low vitamin A, about as low as you can get. And it's a low copper diet. 
Weird. They feel better. What a coincidence. The only problem is, is when they try to come off of it or they eat foods like, like Sean Baker did when he had an apple and he was laid up in bed for three days or whatever, whatever the, the full story is. When you free up that toxic bile out of the liver, it's still really toxic because all muscle meat carnivore doesn't get rid of the toxic bile that's still in the liver. So a little bit of fiber, soluble fiber, maybe even charcoal if you're an all muscle meat carnivore and you're pooping well, would start getting some of that toxic bile out. I would suggest you start slow because that toxic bile has been sitting in your liver waiting a long time to get out and it's going to jump out when it has the chance. So let's continue with the testimonial. I've been lucky to find Garrett Smith's work, that's me, right? Work early in my life. So I'm thinking the reason I am detoxing a lot faster than some others I have seen is just due to less accumulation of vitamin A and other toxins in my body. This is true. Generally, the younger you are, the less toxins you have accumulated. In any case, I make that point to say that even though it might take you a little longer, it is worth continuing to trust the process because you will pull through. It's hard to imagine continuing to get better, but I think it's possible since I haven't even started supplementing other minerals yet. And since it's winter in New Jersey and I haven't gotten much too much sun in the past few months. Um, he added another random note or thought, which he felt is interesting. Going through these in different phases of my life where I was healthy, then unhealthy, then healthy again, it is incredibly easy to see how and why people get absolutely abused and roped in by the medical establishment. For me, I always knew there was a connection between what was being consumed or not consumed and your mental health and well-being. So I never looked to the medical establishment for help. I always think about how during my times of being unhealthy, that if I were to have gone to a doctor, they would have 100% diagnosed me with some type of autoimmune condition or anxiety or depression and prescribed me with some BS medication that I would have been on indefinitely. They do such an amazing job of creating victims who don't want to take control of their lives. To them, everything is random. Nothing has a root cause. And there is nothing you could do to fix it other than take this big pharma poison. And he said, at the end, he says, and yes, Garrett Smith, you can use this if you like. Thank you for everything you've put out there. Well, you are welcome. You are very welcome. This is what we do. This is what we are doing. Stop putting the toxins in, especially the toxins you didn't know about before that you were eating to try to be healthy. Like, oh, I don't know, vitamin A. Stop putting it in. Help the body to get rid of the toxins that it has already stored accumulated by using things like the correct amount of soluble fiber for you. And if you can, if you're pooping enough, then you can try a little bit of charcoal. And then we make sure the body gets the minerals that it needs mainly to help protect the body from the detox and to help the body to fix the damage that has been done. And in the case of things like zinc, Zinc will help the body to not put in, put back in things like copper and manganese and cadmium and lead and mercury into the spots when it's exposed to it. You're going to put minerals into spots in your body. You can either have a good mineral like zinc there, or if that space is empty, you're going to put toxic stuff that you're exposed to, like those minerals, those toxic metals I was just mentioning. Okay. So let me get to. Well, that was an hour ish. No, 50 minutes ish. So 45 minutes, I guess I was that late. Sorry for being late. Um, let me get to the, uh, super chats and then I'll get to the, so if you don't know what super chats are there, you give a little donation to the channel and then your question goes to the top of the queue. So that's what we're doing right now. So we have Shane O'Shea. Sounds like a very, uh, St. Patrick's day name. Um, my wife has been on SSRIs for 20 years and has tried to get off multiple times, but can't succeed. Does your personal program help people in this area? Well, those of you who are here in the chat, if you haven't already um, told Shane your experiences of this, I, that would be awesome. If you do it, if you want to do it in the comments, you know, later you could do it. If you're in the live chat right now, you may want to make a comment. Yes, we can help. SSRIs. Let's just look at um, what what what's the paper? Um, let me 
find it. Oh gosh. Here's the study. Direct inhibition of retinoic acid catabolism by fluoxetine. Let me translate that title. Proper vitamin A detox shut down by Prozac. What are we talking about here? What did I just go over last week about vitamin A and depression? And we, have, we just went over a testimonial about somebody saying how happy they are now. SSRIs cause liver injury, antidepressants. They absolutely cause liver injury. And they slow down bile production. They slow down everything. When you put less, so when they slow down bile production, let me just go check on something. Let me go, let me do uh, SSRI aldehyde dehydrogenase. What I want to see is, can I find quickly if SSRIs slow down aldehyde dehydrogenase? Oh gosh. Here's just a fun paper I just found in this search. Citral inhibition of human salivary aldehyde dehydrogenase. Th this is off topic, but why is this important? Citral. Citraldehyde. You always want to remember if something ends in AL, they're trying to hide the fact that it's an aldehyde from you. Citraldehyde. Where would citraldehyde come from? Oh, I don't know. Citrus fruits. And anything that you're using that might smell like citrus, lemongrass, for example, all these essential oils that smell like lemony. Citraldehyde shuts down your detox. Oh, and then the first sentence of this abstract, human salivary aldehyde dehydrogenase protects us from the toxic effects of aldehydes. And then another sentence a couple later, Citral, which citraldehyde inhibits the dehydrogenase activity of human salivary aldehyde dehydrogenase. So if you are doing citrusy stuff, especially we're talking about lemon oil, lemon grass, anything that is like when you're thinking of, so most of the oil that we're talking about is in the skin, right? Like when you twist a lemon peel or an orange peel and you see the little, the mist come off of it, that's like the oil. That's where the citraldehyde is mostly in it. I'm not too worried about lemon juice, honestly. I think lemon juice probably has more benefits. Fresh lemon juice probably has more benefits than drawbacks. Okay. But the peel, which, right, what, what does mainstream health and nutrition say about the peel of fruits and vegetables? It's the healthiest part. No, it's not. You were lied to. They'll, they'll say it has more vitamins and minerals. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Those vitamins and minerals being there are to protect the very fruit itself, the fruit or vegetable itself. Remember, where would, if a city wanted to protect itself or a castle wanted to protect itself, where do you put your defenses? Do you put them inside the city or do you put them on the wall? You put them on the wall because you don't want them to get into the squishy little nice center of the city. You want that to be soft. You want... You don't want to live in a militarized zone. You want the wall to protect you. So where would fruits and vegetables in this analogy, where would they put their chemical defenses? Remember, plants can only do chemical warfare. That's what they do. They can't move, so they got to do chemical warfare. Where would you put your defenses? On the outside, on the skin. Where is citraldehyde? In the skin, mainly. Where are the bioflavonoids in an, in an orange peel or a lemon peel? That's the pith, the white part. The skin, the wall, okay? Bioflavonoids being also polyphenols, which slow down ALDH, aldehyde dehydrogenase. And they also, that means they deplete B1. So anyway, that was just a fun little 
paper right there. Let me see if I can find anything on SSRIs and aldehyde dehydrogenase. Well, there's nothing on SSRI. Let me type in fluoxetine, which is good old Prozac. Oh, let me put that link in there. Let me put that link for you guys who want to see it. There's that. Better watch out or I'm going to knock my water over. <clears throat> I'm not going to spend very much time on looking for this. Let me look here. We have a paper called Aldehyde Dehydrogenase Inhibitors, a comprehensive review of the pharmacology, mechanism of action, substrate specificity, and clinical application. They would, I want you to understand clinical application. ALDH, aldehyde dehydrogenase, is one of your most important detox enzymes. One of the most important ones. And the pharma cartel, which is the way I, I this is the way I'd like to refer to them in the future, because they're more like a cartel than an industry. They want to make aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitors to treat you with. The most common one is disulfiram, a sulfur-based medication. Weird, sulfur slows down detox, but that's not what everybody on the internet says. Sulfur slows down your detox. Do not go out pursuing more sulfur. Sulfur slows ALDH, disulfiram. That's what they use. It slows aldehyde dehydrogenase. What do they use it for? Let's say you have a recovering alcoholic who's really interested in not drinking, but they have some self-control issues. They give them, they have them taking disulfiram every day. What does it do? It means if they drink alcohol, their ALDH is shut down. And so the alcohol turns into, the ethanol turns into acetaldehyde, which is what causes all the damage of alcohol. They build up acetaldehyde in their system and they feel like the worst hangover you've ever had. So it's a, it's a negative feedback, right? You, you drink alcohol, you feel terrible. So you don't want to drink. So as long as you keep taking the pill, I mean, it's, it seems kind of stupid, right? Cause if you're, a, if somebody was like a real true alcoholic and they really wanted it, they just don't take the pill. I mean, geez, it's not like this. you're gonna have somebody who doesn't want to drink, take a pill. So they feel like garbage if they drink, but then if they decide they're going to drink, they just don't take the pill. I mean, I don't, it seems weird to me. It doesn't seem like it would work very well. But anyway, let me look. Aldehyde, here's a, the first sentence of the paper. Aldehyde dehydrogenases, ALDHs, belong to a super family of enzymes that play a key role in the metabolism. They're trying to make it nice. What they mean is detoxification of aldehydes of both endogenous, made from within our body, and exogenous things that we take in. Oh, I don't know, like cinnamaldehyde from cinnamon, citraldehyde from citrus or lemon smelling things, or uh, vanillin, which is an aldehyde, or cumin aldehyde. Gosh, your spice rack is full of aldehydes. That's why they're all so aromatic. Okay. So let me see. Let's look at these inhibitors. Oh, they don't have the full paper here. Dang it. Okay. Anyway, as the, I couldn't find anything on SSRIs inhibiting ALDH, but I wouldn't doubt it. Um, actually, wait, let me look at... Let me see if they affect... Iol production. No, nothing, nothing obvious. Anyway, can we help with this? Yes. The depression was likely 
due to, I mean, of course, if people are in a really bad situation in life, yes, we can all get depressed. But if there's a chemical basis for it, which is very common, it won't go away very much until we deal with the chemical stuff. Now, can people learn techniques like, oh, I don't know, meditation and other things that help them fight back their thoughts that are driven by the chemistry? Just think of it as like, it's like posture. As they talk about with posture, like people will work really hard on their posture and they'll stand up really straight. And then as soon as they forget about it, they just go right back, right? Because it, they're doing an active mentality to, to maintain it. And as soon as you forget about doing it, the, the structural stuff, the, the weak muscles and the tight muscles, they go back to doing their normal thing. So if you learn, you know, various techniques, mental, spiritual, whatever techniques to help with the depression, as soon as you're distracted from doing those things, the chemistry is always there, like attacking the chemistry is just there. And so the problem comes right back. And yes, you can fight it back again. Many of us have learned how to do this, but if you fix the chemistry, all of a sudden your natural state is just happy. That's how we're supposed to be. Now the world today is pretty freaking depressing. And believe me, if you can imagine where, where people... It, if you spend all day on social media consuming fear porn, like, I mean, you're going to feel bad. If you're constantly watching things on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and whatever, you're just watching like people who sell you fear porn, you're going to be depressed. I don't care what anybody says. You can't, you can't watch that stuff and not have it seep into you. There's probably a reason why there's so much of it out there. Do you think? So you do have to take action to get out of these things. But as we fix the chemistry, it's just easy. You know, it doesn't mean you're immune to it, but it means that it takes a lot of life to make you feel bad at that point. So can we, yes, we, we would do. So generally when we start doing this stuff, we, I don't, well, actually, let's, let's go over why why the withdrawals, because that's really what she's having. When she starts to try to get off of the, the, the SSRI and she stops taking it, she gets withdrawal symptoms. It's a drug, right? Why does this happen? Let's go over toxic bile theory and why this would happen. So what I'm saying here is before when she was depressed, she likely had too much toxic bile leaking into her bloodstream containing toxic bile itself and copper and vitamin A, which we went over in the last live stream about how, or the one before that, that how they're all connected. Okay. So then the SSRI comes in, slows down the bile production. How, wait, let me, let me do this. Wait, 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 wait. Um, So yeah, here, antidepressant induced liver injury. I want to find one on fatty liver. I'm sure. Here, I'm trying to find it. Um, well, anyway, I, if, if somebody wants to go and find some links on fatty liver and uh, or steatosis, S-T-E-A-T-O-S-I-S, I'm sure you'll find it associated with SSRIs, or you can look up the specific ones, fluoxetine and that stuff. If we saw that there's fatty liver associated with that drug, then we know that the bile is not being produced and it's getting stored in the liver. So the bile is not coming out of the liver. It's getting stored. When the, if the bile coming out of the liver and leaking into the bloodstream was the root cause of the depression, how could we pharmaceutically reduce the depression? right? So what is pharmaceuticals? What is their thinking? If let's say it was too much bile in the blood, which they don't even know about, or maybe they do. If there was too much bile in the blood, like what is, what does modern medicine do? If it's too hot, make it cold. If it's too dry, make it wet. If that part's broken, cut it out. 
right? This is what they do, cut, burn, and drug. So they would say, if there's too much bile in the blood, let's shut down the bile production. Nothing bad could happen there. So they shut down the bile production. So the bile's not coming out. So then there's nothing, there's not much leaking into the blood. So then the cause of the depression was the bile in the blood. You shut down the bile coming out of the liver, or you at least you reduce it a lot, and all of a sudden the symptoms get better. So now that we understand that, what happens when you take the SSRI away? Was anything fixed? Like root cause fixed while somebody was on SSRIs? No, nothing about the root cause was fixed. Nothing. What actually was happening was in the background, the causes of the root causes of the depression were festering and getting worse. The toxins were building up in the liver because you're not getting rid of the bile. So then as the effect of the SSRI wears off, the liver starts pumping out bile because it's desperate to get rid of this toxic bile. We didn't fix the toxic bile leakage. And now the bile is even more toxic because you hadn't been getting rid of the toxins that are coming in at us every day. And so now you're dumping even more toxic bile and it leaks into the bloodstream and you get the exact same symptoms you had before, maybe even worse. This is why people, when they want to get off these things, they usually have to wean very slowly so that their body can kind of get used to getting, you know, making a little bit more bile and not leaking too much into the bloodstream. And so they don't have a really bad time. What do we do on the program? Well, you just heard that testimonial. We fix the toxicity coming in. We help the liver get rid of the toxicity that is there. And we give the body the minerals that it needs to protect itself and to detox. That's what we do. This, this is the concept and principles that we do. So what does that do? It makes the bile less toxic. As the bile becomes less toxic, you leak less into the bloodstream. As you get the minerals to counteract, oh, I don't know, the bad things like copper. You have less of the actual toxin that's causing the depression floating around. And then we are able to wean off of, the, 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 the client is able to wean themselves off of the medication. We see it all the time. Some people jump off of it. You can always try it. You might have a bad time. Some people are willing to push through that. It can be pretty rough. I'm not advocating either one. I let, I let some people are like, I'm a cold Turkey or nothing thing. If you're, if you're like all or nothing, cold Turkey or nothing, it can be really rough. And there's people who thought they were tough and they're like, I can't get off this medication. It kicks my ass every time I try to stop it. Then we go, okay. We start fixing the underlying root causes. The body starts healing itself the bile becomes less toxic. You leak less of it. And then all of a sudden you start going, hey, even though I'm on this medication, I feel better than I used to. Maybe I can reduce the medication a little bit. And they do, and they go, well, that wasn't so bad. And they continue doing the things that we do, and they get better, and they're improving. And they start going, oh, I feel comfortable dropping the medication even more. And then this is how it works. This is how we get people off of meds. They get themselves off of meds without a really rough time. It seems it makes sense, doesn't it? This, this is why it's so hard for so many people to get off medications is because they just think I'm just going to get off the medication and they, they're not fixing any of the underlying stuff that caused them to be put on the medication in the first place. So yes, can we help? Yes. Let's see. So thank you for that super chat, um, Shane. I appreciate that. And I hope, I hope that answers yours and her question. Um, m, m Professional Window Cleaners Limited says, are there any health concerns with using tooth whitening products off the shelf, on the shelf, or from the dentist? Probably. I mean, you're going to, if uh, even those, those little trays where you put the stuff in, I mean, think about this. You're trying to put the trays, these little like teeth trays, right? 
you're trying to put that teeth whitener stuff in there and have it sit on your teeth, but they're trying to make it so it's not going into your mouth, probably because it's toxic. They're going to be oxidizers. That's how you ox. I, I started, I started getting into, I actually think that what radiation therapy for cancer is radiation therapy is probably some massive oxidation assault on the tissues. So you're breaking down, you're moving the toxic stuff that is stored in the cancer along the detox pathway. But for those of you who have been here long enough, it can make things more toxic. And then you also damage good tissue with the mega oxidation. Can you have too much oxidation? Sure. Absolutely. You can have too much anything. The poison is in the dose. Remember the poison is in the dose is the calling card of like pharma shills. That's their main argument. They're like, the poison is in the dose. No, sometimes make that argument for mercury. Make that argument for lead. Find me the dose of mercury or lead that's not toxic. And actually the research has shown that with ethanol, alcohol, there's no dose that's been shown to be okay. Same thing with x-ray radiation. There's no dose that's known to be safe. That doesn't mean you can't ever do it. It just means there is, it's just, just accept it. There is no known dose that is safe. But we're all living you know, breathing air is killing you. You're oxidizing. So we're all going through this life trying to, you know, pick and choose. And you can, I just want people to know what you're choosing. You know, if you want to rub lemon oil all over your kid's head and inhibit their detox systems, then you wonder why they never get better and why they only get worse. Believe me, I know this used to happen in my household. Not my fault, but this whole essential oil thing, folks, you got to get off of these things. Essential. You love how they put the word essential in there. The most stinky parts of the plant. We're going to concentrate that and then call them essential. I've had these cups since college. I love these cups. But I would tooth whitening stuff. I mean, if you want to do tooth whitening first, we work on not refluxing bile up, right? Which would be fixing cholestasis. We work on lowering vitamin A in the system because that will also cause it. We work on not eating yellow or bitter things because those all damage the liver. And then if you wanted to do some things, you can do some food grade hydrogen peroxide, like, like the normal, the normal basic strength, you know, some places will say it's 3%. Some places will say it's 0.3%. I don't know why they, they do the different numbers. And those of you who have looked at this, you, you know what I'm talking about it. Some people will say, well, those aren't the same. And I'm like, I know they're not the same. They sell them as like, they're the same because 0.3% and 3% are not the same number. Anyway. So you can do that. You can swish with hydrogen peroxide. Doing that too often, like for those of you who are gung-ho, you start doing that every day and it's going to be too rough on your gums. It's just going to be absolutely too rough. My parents, my, my dad's dental office, they said they, they had a guy come in who used like hydrogen peroxide every day and they're, they're like his gums had all these white spots on them. It was too much. But hydrogen peroxide is a good oxidizer. And if you, if you use it on occasion, like I used to use it once a week. I would do my whole big, my, my big routine dental stuff, teeth cleaning. I had a big routine I would do once a week and hydrogen peroxide was part of that. Just swishing it food grade. Don't get the, the drugstore stuff has aluminum stabilizers in it. They don't put it on the label. They don't have to tell you everything in the label. So don't use the drugstore stuff, get food grade stuff and make sure you're using the right strength. If you get really strong stuff, you've got to dilute it or you will tear apart tissue. Absolutely. Read about it. Get the right strength. Dilute it if you need to. You could even, if you felt regular 3% hydrogen peroxide was too strong, you can dilute that. Nobody said you can't. It's just water. So there's that. You can do the charcoal swishing that I talk about. You, you can do that multiple times a day. Um, some people have found success with oil pulling. I want you to think about this oil pulling 
bile. Does bile emulsify and kind of attach to fats? Yeah. Are carotenoids, vitamin A, and retinoids fat soluble? Do they bind to fats? Yes. Does charcoal bind to fats? Or bind to, but does charcoal binds to fats? Yes. Does charcoal bind to vitamin A? Yes. Does charcoal bind to bile? Yes. Charcoal can whiten your teeth. Oil pulling has been said to whiten your teeth. Oil could, this is a theory of mine, but oil could bind to the bile and the vitamin A and the other fat soluble toxins that are stuck on your teeth. And that's how it gets stuff out of there. So those are the things, you know, you could get a charcoal based, um, tooth powder. The problem with those, they almost always come with clays. And some people are very concerned about the lead content of the clay that's in the charcoal tooth powders. Um, there's also the products at calciumtherapy.com. I'm experimenting with these right now. I like it so far. Feels good. I'm not, I, I know people here will say, but Dr. Smith, you usually have such a problem with calcium. I'm not, a, I'm not averse to putting calcium on the teeth themselves. So go check out calciumtherapy.com. I think, I think they're really onto something. I like their products. I've been using them um, for several weeks now. So let me get, so that's, I would, I would do the, I would do these more natural things and also slow down the detox. So you're not pushing too much bile into places. It's not supposed to go. And that's, that's what I would do. Yes. I would not use the over the counter or the dent, the dentist stuff, it, the dentist stuff that might be light related where they're like shining the, the light on the teeth. I don't remember. I don't know exactly what that's called, but that, that could probably be all right. I'm, I'm not averse to light therapies. But I think they put something on your teeth before they put the light in. So you really wouldn't want to ingest the stuff they're putting on your teeth. Hope that helps. Um, Reconnect to Health asks, how can I heal gastritis slash low stomach acid and slow transit? I'm going to say, well, we get into charcoal here. Um, oh, sorry, slow transit. I was thinking fast transit. I was thinking like diarrhea, like stuff going too fast. Um, with gastritis, very likely, well, let, let's just go look. Primary, here's a paper, primary bile reflux gastritis. Hey, who talks about bile reflux and how bile will just eat away at everything it touches? That me. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say thank you, Reconnect to Health. Thank you for the super chat and thank you to Eminem for the super chat as well. Sorry if, if I that slipped my mind. I really appreciate it. Um, so bile is the reason. Bile going backwards up into your stomach is the reason for your gastritis. Bile eats away at everything it touches. That's what it does, which is why you want to keep it in your gallbladder, in your bile ducts, in your liver, in your small intestine, and poop it out as much as possible. So you may need to, some people with gastritis and that stuff, you may want to go, some, some people have found great success with going to a, a, like basically an all muscle meat carnivore diet for a short period of time. Because then you're not putting out, you're not stimulating bile release with soluble fiber. You're not taking in much copper. You're not taking in much vitamin A. Meat's fairly easy to digest. You may, you may need to spread it out during the day. So you're not, if you don't have a lot of stomach acid, you may need to spread it out. Like do multiple small meals. So you're not putting too much meat down there that you can't digest it well. So you just need to do a little bit at a time, but eat multiple times a day. I don't always recommend this, but this can be super helpful. Um, and, and warm foods. Your digestion likes warm foods in general. Digestion doesn't like cold foods. Cold drinks, cold foods, your digestion doesn't like it. Every like old school alternative 
approach, whether it's Ayurveda or Chinese medicine, none of them like cold foods. Cold in temperature, I mean. And meat would be a very warming foods because it used to be on a warm blooded animal, right? So, um, there would be that. Now, some sometimes uh, it's been said that adding more chloride to the diet. Well, how do you make hydrochloric acid for your stomach to help digest? Well, that would be more chloride would help, and that could be in the form of salt or magnesium chloride or potassium chloride. We use all three of them on the program. I don't have time to go into how we use them because those are massive articles and videos that are inside the Love Your Liver program. But getting more chloride down there could help. Um, I have used zinc carnosine with people before. Um, it's been shown to help with ulcers and stuff. I just want to tell you about zinc carnosine. It's something that you can try. It's not good at raising your zinc levels. It's terrible at raising zinc levels. I've never seen it raise zinc levels on blood tests or hair tests ever. So then we start getting into, well, if it's not good at fixing zinc, is it simply the carnosine that's on there? I don't know. Could it help potentially? Sure. Could you do something like the, what, what the gums out there? What is there? Mastic gum and some of the other gums that might, uh, they're said to be uh, like marshmallow root. Things that very much mucilaginous, they're very um, gel-like. Gosh, what's gel-like when it gets wet? Soluble fiber. So you could, what, what does soluble fiber soak up? Bile. What's causing the gastritis? Bile. How can we soak up bile? We can do things like mucilaginous things, things that gel when they get wet. Now you got to be careful of that because that may stimulate too much bile dumping and you may not feel good because of that. So the biggest first thing with gastritis, you got to find foods that work for you that do not aggravate the gastritis. I don't care what I've said about a food or what anybody else has said about a food. If you try it and you eat it and it makes it worse, don't eat it. I don't care what the internet says, me or otherwise. This is the most important thing. Doc, it hurts when I do this. Don't do that. So first thing is know which foods aggravate it. Know which foods you tolerate best. Start eating more of the foods you tolerate best. But again, like I said, if you got low stomach acid, you may need to do smaller meals through the day to kind of spread it out so you can digest each one separately so you can so your body can focus on it. One of the other things might be you may want to go to eating one food at a time. This is the hardest thing for people to do. I'm going to tell you folks, you will digest the absolute best if you only ate one type of food at a time. I'm not saying you have to do this, but anybody knows that like, if I know this for sure, like if I go and I eat just something beef, like if I eat a steak by itself or I eat a hamburger patty by itself, my digestion is amazing. Like I don't even feel it in my stomach. Or if you eat an apple by itself or multiple apples, you will digest that amazingly as long as it's a food you get along with. The only problem becomes it can be hard to get enough food sometimes doing that because you got to eat a lot of that food. Like if you were only going to eat beef once in a day and eat it by itself, you got to get enough beef at that sitting because you're not going to have it at other meals. So eating one food at a time might help. So I think we went over th those and, and slow transit. Okay. So let me go over my little constipation. The, I'm not going to go deep into these, but the love your liver approved ways of helping pooping co for constipated people. I'm not going into detail on these. If you want detail on these, that's in the love your liver program. I don't have time to go over it here. Oral magnesiums, various types. There's a bunch of them. I'm not going to go over the list here. Magnesium by mouth is good for helping pooping. It's not good at helping raise your systemic magnesium levels. I don't care what type of magnesium. They all can help pooping. You take enough oral magnesium of any type, it will cause you to blow it out. We're trying to find the dose that helps you poop, not blow it out. 
Oral magnesium, I've watched hair tests. I, I believe 95% of people cannot raise their systemic magnesium levels with oral magnesium. There's like 5% that can. They're lucky. Other Everybody else, what's the other side? Topical magnesium. Topical magnesium is great at raising systemic magnesium levels. It doesn't help your pooping so much because it's not in your gut. Okay, so the oral magnesium. Find a type that you get along with. And there's different types that are better for pooping and there's different types that are better for helping with other things, mainly due to what they're bound to, like malate or glycinate or other types, okay? Next is potassium, getting your potassium levels right. People in the Love Your Liver program, I actually learned this from the people who were in the Love Your Liver program, was that getting your potassium right, whether it's through foods or supplements, can help your pooping as much as anything else. Why? Potassium is critical to the function of your thyroid. Oh, thyroid's related to pooping? Why, yes, it is. So getting your potassium right can really help your pooping. And I have a big article or video on in the network about potassium and how to do it. Potassium and magnesium are two of the most important things that people, that there are the, some of the most common things that people are either kind of lazy on or don't do on the program. And they're the places where people can get the most immediate results. Now, if you take this, anyone out there, if you take this and you start overdosing yourself on magnesium and potassium and you're not listening and you didn't read my stuff and all my warnings in the Love Your Liver program, I can't help you. There's a lot of hardcore people out there who just gung-ho into everything and Potassium supplements, I'm going to warn you, potassium supplements can be some of the most amazing things you ever take, but if you jump into them too fast and you take the wrong one that doesn't agree with you, you can feel really bad really quick. So what do we do? We go slowly, maybe a hundred milligram increase a day. If you get any negative symptoms, what do we do? We back off or we try a different type. It's very simple. We, we always come back to the doc. It hurts when I do this. Well, don't do that or do less of that. Third, sun fiber. Sun fiber is partially hydrolyzed guar gum. It is not straight guar gum. Don't take straight guar gum generally. That's, it's too irritating. It's got too many saponins. Partially hydrolyzed guar gum is much more pleasant, but I still have people start slow. I have a whole general approach to starting sun fiber in the program too. We are going to eventually have our own sun fiber, organic sun fiber product coming out. It's not out yet, but we will eventually have it out. That's how much I like that stuff, but it doesn't get along with everybody. Just like zinc doesn't get along with everybody. I got a zinc product. It doesn't get along with everybody. Keystone minerals doesn't get along with everybody. Some people take lactoferrin and it's the most amazing thing. Our, our lactoferrin can be the most amazing thing somebody's ever taken. And other people go, I can't even take the little drop. It's a teaspoon, measuring teaspoon. It's a 164th of a teaspoon. They can't even take 164th of a teaspoon because it causes them to produce too much bile too quickly. And so we just don't take it yet. Yet. Maybe later. So oral magnesium, potassium, sun fiber, the last two, prunes. I know some people out there who obsess over vitamin A levels in foods are going to freak out that I said prunes. First of all, drying the prunes has been shown to break down some of the carotenoids. Prunes are dried plums, if you didn't know. Some people are like, their mind's blown. They're like, I never knew prunes were dried plums. <laughs> and I, I, I was one of those people. I was like, wait, what? Um, make sure they're not preserved, that they don't add sulfites or sorbates or any of that stuff. But prunes can be very helpful. They are quite high in potassium. And they do help people poop in a relatively gently way gentle manner. If you want to freak out about the vitamin A levels, go ahead, go somewhere else. We don't obsess on vitamin A levels in foods. It is more important in my opinion on the subject of prunes. It is more important to get somebody pooping to get the bile out that way than it is to worry about a little bit of carotenoids in some prunes. I didn't say prune juice. Prune juice can be helpful, but I just eat the prunes. They're small. They taste good. If you want to rehydrate them or what do they call it? Uh, where people add hot water to prunes to kind of rehydrate them. That's fine. I don't care. 
Um, and then the last thing is kiwis, peeled kiwi fruit, well peeled, because the peel of the kiwi is one of the highest oxalate foods known to mankind. So you really don't leave a little bit of the peel on there, the little brown peel, the fuzzy stuff. Get all of that off. There is quite a bit of research on two kiwi fruit a day helping with constipation. And people on the Love Your Liver Network really looked into kiwi in terms of vitamin A content, and they could hardly find any vitamin A in it, even the different carotenoids. So kiwi can be considered a low vitamin A fruit and is known to help constipation. So those are the five things. So you can, you can mix and match them. You could find one that works. You could mix and match them to make it work for you. Now, over time, if, as you're getting better, what you should see is that you need less of these things. That's what we want. That means you're getting better. Just like the same thing we just talked about with the SSRIs. As people get better, they find that they can wean themselves off the SSRIs. As people get better, they find that if they need things to help them poop because they're constipated, they find that they can use less. That is a sign we are fixing the root cause. That more of, you're making more bile, most likely, and more of it is staying in your intestines and, and you're pooping better. And then your other symptoms would go down because more of the bile is going into your intestines and staying there and being pooped out versus going into your bloodstream and causing you systemic symptoms. That's the whole basis of toxic bile theory. And why people are sick these days is because of toxic bile getting into their blood. So I hope that gave you enough to work with reconnect to health. I hope that was good. Thank you for the, the super chat. Let me see if, oh, wow. Oh, I hate it when it does this. It just jumps. Um, let me see. We're at 945. I gotta, I, I I'm going to see if there's any more super chats. If not, that may be all the questions we get to today. I got to get to the inner circle. Um, Oh, there it is. Ramon. Good old Ramon. Every week, Ramon's there. I see you, Ramon. Thank you for the super chat. Um, what is your take on these deodorant ingredients? Potassium alum, cellquat, hydroxyethyl cellulose, benzoic acid, zinc gluconate. What do you use? Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you for the super chat, Ramon. Um, if, I'm just going to ask everybody, please, no more super chats. I got to get to my inner circle and I don't want to, I don't want to miss any of them. So I'm going to get to yours, Ramon. And then I, I didn't, let me just see if there's any more before I get to yours. No, no more super chats. So please no more. This is going to be the last question of the day. I got to get to my inner circle. Um, okay. Potassium alum. This is, this is such, uh, okay. I, I wouldn't use this stuff. You're putting aluminum in your body. A-L-U-M means aluminum. I don't know. I do not know how manufacturers got to, this is like better living through chemistry. This is the, the pharma cartel. This is all of it. Potassium alum is potassium bound to aluminum. And I bet that deodorant says it's aluminum free. Crystal, so here's a, I, I just went and searched, um, crystal deodorant is a type of alternative deodorant made of natural mineral salt called potassium alum, also known as potassium aluminum sulfate. Hmm. What two of those things do I generally not recommend people use? Uh, aluminum is just going to rot your brain. Sulfate will slow your detox. And yet I bet the label of that deodorant says it's aluminum free. What a dang lie. Do not use alum containing deodorants. It's aluminum. It sh I, here's how do I know it shows up on hair tests. I didn't know that the crystal stick deodorant had aluminum in it until people started coming in and their aluminum showed up higher than I like it on their hair test. And I was like, do you use any perspirant? And they say, no, no, no. I use the crystal deodorant. I'm like, oh, there's a, there's aluminum on your hair test. And then I went and I looked and it says alum on the label. And I was like, 
well, how would how would we not know that this is aluminum? A L U M. It's the exact same start of the word, right? So, but I I didn't know either. So Ramon, I'm not disparaging you. This this they sneak this bias. The label says aluminum free, but then potassium alum and and a lot of people look at that and they go, wait, alum looks like aluminum, but the label says aluminum free. Well, they say it's aluminum free, so I'll go for it. They lied to us. They lie to us all day every day. That's what they do. So based on that one ingredient, I wouldn't do it. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of, cell quat seems kind of scary. I'm not going to go through all of these. I would not use that stuff. Cell quat. Cell quat H100 polymer is a high viscosity cationic conditioner slash film former useful in a broad range of styling, cleansing, and skincare products. polymer. I, I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't put it on my skin. So I'm not going to go through the rest of those ingredients. That potassium alum is enough to not use it. Um, benzoic acid. I don't know about the, the, it's funny. These things that they use in a lot of the skin products are oic acids, like retinoic acid, as in retin-A. And then you got benzoic acid. I, I, I don't trust it. Hydroxyethyl cellulose is probably just some sort of Soluble fiber, in a way, is my guess. I didn't look it up. What do I use as deodorant? Okay, so I have a tweet on this. Um, it's very simple. How if it, so? Antiperspirants. Let's just let's just distinguish. Antiperspirants make you not sweat or sweat less. Antiperspirant, anti-sweating. How do they do this? They clog your pores. That's what they do. That's the only way they could stop you from sweating. I didn't, I didn't know this until, you know, several years ago, or it was more than several years ago. But at some point I was like, wait, that's how antiperspirants work. They just clog your sweat glands. And then I went, oh, wow, that's really bad because we're supposed to sweat. Sweating is healthy. If you have either excess sweating or not sweating, you've got problems. You've got probably toxicity problems. And we've seen this correct itself in many, many, many people on the program. So not sweating or sweating too much is a sign of poor health. And we want to fix that. That's what we do. So antiperspirants block sweat glands. That's, that's what they do. They use aluminum zirconium tetrahydrochlorate. That is the active ingredient in nearly all antiperspirants. They clog your pores with aluminum bound to zirconium. You can see it on a hair test. You see aluminum and zirconium elevated at the same time, persons using antiperspirant, or if they've stopped for a while, they're probably detoxing old aluminum and zirconium. And it's showing up in their hair test. So we don't use antiperspirants. If you have to use an antiperspirant, you better only use it when you absolutely have to. Now, if you have issues with body odor, foot odor, armpit odor, groin odor, you know, now so many people are having problems with this, that there's now this Lume, an all over body deodorant for all those sensitive areas that stank. Okay. This just shows how toxic people are getting and how nutrient deficient they're getting. Many, many people have found, how do we fix body odor? We correct magnesium deficiency. We correct zinc deficiency and we stop putting in so much damn sulfur. Sulfur makes you stink. What's in garlic and onions that makes your breath smell so bad? It's sulfur. How do you think you smell when the sulfur comes out of your pores? You stink. What happens if you take too much DMSO? Dimethyl sulfoxide. It can come out your skin and out your breath and it makes you stink like onions. What do people say body odor smells like often? Onions. Do you see the connection? So we stop eating excess sulfur foods. Things like garlic, onions, cruciferous vegetables. The cruciferous vegetable family, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage. Doesn't mean you can't ever eat those things. You just don't eat them like you think they're a health food because they're not a health food. Cauliflower is all right. 
So is light green cabbage. It's all right, but just don't make it regular. Especially if you got body odor problems, you may want to take it out for a good long while. Don't do sulfur type supplements. Don't add more sulfur to the system. You get plenty of sulfur in meat. Okay. You get plenty of sulfur in meat. There's no need to add more with vegetables. And you know, those vegetables smell a lot when you cook them, right? You can stink up a whole house with cruciferous vegetables. They stink because they got lots of sulfur. So when we fix zinc deficiency, when we fix magnesium deficiency, when we fix excess sulfur consumption, we see body odor disappear. It just disappears. Now I can tell you, even in my own experience, I know I need tons of magnesium. And if I slow down on, if I don't use my topical magnesium, which I'm going to tell you, I'm human. I know I talk a lot about topical magnesium and I st I'm human. I I'm busy guy. Sometimes I forget to put my topical magnesium on. How do I know that I've been missing my topical magnesium after about a week, maybe a week and a half of, of not doing it well. I start to get some body odor coming out of my armpits when I sweat. Cause I do work out a lot and I, my smell changes. What do I do? I just get back on the topical magnesium and within a day or two, the problem is gone. I fixed my zinc deficiency a long time ago. It would take a long time of me not getting enough zinc to, to let my zinc go down. And I generally don't eat high sulfur plant foods. I definitely don't take any high sulfur um, supplements and I take my molybdenum in my keystone minerals so I can properly process sulfur in my body. That is how you fix body odor. Now, what do I use as a deodorant? Lots of people have found that if you apply some form of topical magnesium to your armpits, whether that's magnesium oil or there's one, there's a roll on, Life Flow makes a roll on aloe plus magnesium that you can put there. Um, Magahol, magnesium chloride combined with a clear alcohol. There's my mag cahol, which is magnesium chloride and potassium chloride combined with a clear alcohol. I just added potassium to the mix and bumped up. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just added potassium to the mix. Really? Um, that's actually what I use as deodorant. I put, I put topical magnesium on my armpits. So we get, we get a double whammy. We get the, the, the salt cause salts are Salts are minerals, right? Bound to other minerals. So we have sodium chloride is a salt. Magnesium chloride is a salt. Potassium chloride is a salt. Salt, when the salt content is high enough, generally, bacteria doesn't grow. So we can both use, we can refill the magnesium deficiency, which is the main cause of the smell. And we can then put salt, mineral salts in the area, which then inhibit bacterial growth. So then the bacteria is not there to, I don't know, feed on the sulfur and make you stink. So we have a double, we have kind of a local approach and a systemic approach all combined. Works really, really well. That's my deodorant. And how do we fix these things properly? Well, if you want to know how to fix your zinc levels, I mean, what we do in my testing and consultation stuff, we test your zinc in your hair. We test your zinc in your blood. And we also have the follow-ups included so that we can figure out how your zinc dose is going for you. Is it too much? Is it not enough? Can we go up? Should we go down? The part that, that so many practitioners miss out on is they don't give you follow-up. When you work in with me or Nathan, you get follow-up included in the package. If you do in, you know, the individual consultation with us. This is how you really fine tune it. You need to be, you need to be in touch with your, with your practitioner. In my opinion, I didn't like the whole idea of nickel. You know, if somebody calls and they're like, doc, I'm having a problem with this. I didn't like telling him, oh, schedule and pay for another consult. It felt like nickel and diming. I didn't like that. So we include office hours, which is a small group follow-ups in the packages because the most important time, like a doctor could tell you what to take. A practitioner could tell you what to take. And if you go home and you take it and you feel like hot garbage, first of all, you're going, well, they told me to take this and I don't feel good. 
And now they want me to pay them to come back, to talk to them, to tell them that what they told me to take makes me not feel good, right? That doesn't feel, that doesn't feel right to me. So that's why I'm like, first of all, we're going to start slow. Second of all, if anything ever makes you feel bad, you have every okay to stop it or reduce your dose. And third, I'm going to give you follow-up included so that if something doesn't feel right, you can come and talk to me and we can figure out what's going on. You don't have to worry about paying for more visits. Okay? This is how we do things differently. And zinc can be, zinc, zinc takes, zinc in my consults is the mineral that I spend the most time on by far. Zinc is hugely important. And then magnesium, we use the hair test, especially how magnesium is related to calcium, the calcium magnesium ratio to determine if your magnesium is okay, first of all, and if your approach is working. And if it's not, how do we need to tweak it? Most of the time, the tweaking is simply if people are doing their topical magnesium regularly and they're just not quite where we want them, we just say, you know, do five more sprays a day. Probably that's all you need. But it's very easy to assess this with the hair test and then the zinc. We do the hair test, helps us with zinc and magnesium, and then the blood test we do also for zinc. I'm one of the only people out there looking at zinc in both blood and hair. And sometimes you'll be deficient in one and look okay in the other. And it's really strange when that happens, but we know that there's a zinc deficiency going on and we want both of them to look good. So that's how we fix body odor. And that's what I use as a deodorant. Yup. So let me just make sure nobody snuck in another super chat <laughs> just in case. Um, Oh, Evan posted here. He said, I use Magsol deodorant. It will, it will pit stain shirts though. Body odor is way less than in the past. The pit stains, if it's yellow pit stains, I don't know what's in Magsol. Let me just, this is the last thing. Let me look what's in Magsol. I hope they, uh, don't make it hard to find the ingredients. I can't stand companies that are selling stuff and they make it super hard to find ingredients. Oh, they've mentioned here coconut oil free because it can clog pores. Coconut oil will clog your pores like nothing else. Um, oh, sweet almond oil. What is it about sweet almond oil? There is something in sweet almond oil that told, okay, there's a reason. Okay. Evan, I, I, I forget what it is in sweet almond oil that is like either, it either slows down detox or it's toxic itself. I, there's something in it. I don't like sweet almond oil. I can't remember what it is. That's probably what's causing the, the pit stains. I forget what it is. I don't have time to look it up right now. But anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. There is something in there. Let's look. Let me see if I can find. Hold on. Well, that was, oh, the sweet almond oil contains large amounts of vitamin E and K that help skin regeneration and maintain elasticity, which is why the oil is used in many cosmetic products. Large amounts of vitamin E, yellow. That's probably what is staining your pits. And vitamin E can induce up to 20 times more storage of vitamin A in the liver. I have presented that evidence in the advanced detox section of the love your liver program. So that's, that's what's causing that most likely. And some people we've seen it before on the program, some people, um, 
they sweat yellow. We've had people report that their 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 beds, their bed sheet turned yellow as they were going through the vitamin A detox. Gosh, what do you think's coming out of their skin that's turning things yellow? I don't know, it could be vitamin A, could be bile, could be the old berberine that they took, could be the old turmeric they took. Their body's just desperately trying to get rid of all of it because yellow marks poison in the natural world. So that's all I have for today, folks. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone, you know, for giving the testimonials for Will for like the teeth observation. Um, somebody else, I forget who posted the orange corn thing. I just grabbed it off the network. Thank you for all of you for your chats and, um, and the super chats, especially really appreciate that. Um, that's all I have. If you want more information from me, you can find it down in the, in the info below the video, uh, the live chat. Sometimes it takes a couple days to come on. It should be there. Remember to comment. Short comments are totally welcome. I, I, I forget who does it, but somebody just puts W in the comments after each video. I love that. That's like, <laughs> even you can say whatever you want. You could put an emoji, just the comments really help the algo to, uh, know that people are watching and that they're liking and they're interacting because that's what they want because then the advertisers are more happy, right? Because that's what they're after. Anyway, I'm Dr. Garrett Smith, the nutrition detective. Remember the Keystone Minerals are back if you want to get them now. I'm so excited. I just started on mine yesterday again. So have a great weekend. Stay safe. Watch out for yellow and orange and red things. Bye now.